Well, good evening there, kids. I found the neatest book, 25 Young People Who Changed the World. It's called YFA, Young, Fearless, and Awesome. And the first one I'm gonna read is called Claudette Co Coblin. No, Colvin, Colvin, excuse me. I didn't say it right, okay? That's, that's the young lady right there. And let's find out why she is young, fearless, and awesome. Civil rights heroine. You've heard of civil rights icon Rosa Parks, right? She became famous after being arrested in 1955 for refusing to give up her bus seat to a white man. But did you know that just nine months earlier, 15-year-old Claudette Colvin was arrested for exactly the same crime? While Rosa Parks became a powerful symbol of America's civil rights movement, Claudette's bravery has largely been forgotten. She was born September 5th, 1939, um, civil rights pioneer. Born in Alabama in the deep south, Claudette Colvin grew up at a time when there, were racial, when there was racial segregation. This meant that African Americans were treated as second class citizens. They had different schools, churches, and stores from white people, and they had to put up with signs that said things like whites only and colored must sit in rear. Claudette was first, firsthand the ugly sauce, excuse me. Claudette saw firsthand the ugly racism that was commonplace in the South at the time. It affected all aspects of life. She remembers how when she needed school shoes, her mother had to trace the outline of her foot onto a paper bag to get her shoe size because she wasn't allowed to try on shoes in the store. Oh my gosh. As at her segregated school, Claudette was a bright student who was rather rebellious. She worked hard but shocked her classmates by refusing to straighten her hair as was expected of black people at the time. In class, she learned about black history, the experiences of Harriet Tubman and Sewanee so Warner Truth, who both escaped slavery and became political activists, made a deep impression on her. On March 2nd, 1955, Claudette and her friends decided to take the bus home from school. Do you know that I was born on March 6th, 1955? So that means four days before my birthday is when she decided to take the bus home from school. When a young white woman boarded the full bus, the driver asked the girls to give her a seat. Although three of them stood up, Claudette did not. She told the driver she had paid her fare and it was her constitutional right to remain seated. You go, girl. That isn't in there. I just added that. You go, girl. Although there was now a seat for the white woman, she still wouldn't sit down because she would have, it would have meant sitting in the same row as the black person. Claudette later said that she felt like Sewarney Truth from was pushing down on her shoulder and Harriet Tubman was pushing down on the other shoulder saying, sit down girl. The teenager was roughly taken off the bus by two police officers, placed in an adult prison and charged with defying segregation laws. Claudette's story was reported locally and at, and at first she was seen as someone who could be the face of the civil rights movement. But it was decided she was perhaps too young, and when she later became pregnant, the sto her story faded into the background. Nine months later, Rosa Parks made a similar stand, refusing to give up her bus seat for a white passenger. This time, the, the act of defiance was reported around the world. Parks' actions sparked the Montgomery bus boycott when many black people refused to travel on the city buses for 381 days, so over a year. 365 days in a year. That's just a little test there for you. In 1956, Claudette and three other women filed a lawsuit against the city of Montgomery. It was called Browder v. Gale, and eventually the Supreme Court ruled segregation on buses must end. It was a huge victory for civil rights. Claudette later became a nurse in New York City, but she didn't tell many people about her story. In 2009, a book, Claudette Colvin was published and it's shown a, and it's shown a spotlight on her actions. Although Rosa pa Parks is the name that people celebrate when it comes to civil rights movement, the book finally gave Claudette some of the credit she deserves. And it says, be fearless like Claudette Colvin. You're with some classmates when some of some start 
taunting a girl who has recently arrived from another country. You feel sorry for the new student. She's struggling to fit in and obviously in need of a friend, but you don't want to draw attention to yourself. What might Claudette Colvin do? Hmm, questions and answers, let's see. Claudette Colvin knew very well what it's like to live in an unfair society. It would have been very easy for her to play it safe, but she knew the system wasn't right. The sense of injustice gave her the courage to make a stand. We can't know for sure what she'd tell you, but she would probably encourage you to stand up for what you know is right and make the new girl feel welcome. And who knows, you might make a great new friend. I love that. And a quote from her is, I knew then and I know now when it comes to justice, there is no way to get it. You can't sugarcoat it. You have to take a stand and say, this is not right, and I did. And that is her quote in a little picture right there. I love this book. All right, that's our first story of young, fearless, and awesome kids. All right, see you later, Gators.